Welcome back to our podcast. Today we're talking about entrepreneurship and we have the director of the MBA entrepreneurship program at Vilnius University, a new program, which is really cool. So we're looking forward to new ideas and new approaches in terms of entrepreneurship. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. We're having I start from Vilnius University today and uh, um, when I think about entrepreneurship and education and entrepreneurship, I tend to think that entrepreneurship could be different than other kinds of courses. For example, in accounting, we often see that it's about the methodologies, the theories and their applications. So we'll, we'll look at the test or the practical application of the knowledge. For example, how well somebody can do a balance sheet or income statement. But when I look at entrepreneurship, it seems to me that there's the theory and the concepts that we need to have. However, in any entrepreneurship course that I've been involved in, there's always the other side, and that is the opportunity that students might bring to the course and whether we evaluate that. So the, the professor is sometimes in a dilemma. Do they give the grade based on the academic understanding or do they give a grade based on the opportunity and how well it's developed within the course? And I've seen some professors struggle with that because they may be great in on the academic side, so they can evaluate whether a student has learned the, the background, but they're reluctant to, or they don't have the capability to evaluate the opportunity. So I don't know whether when you were developing your your MBA program, whether you wrestled with that of the concepts versus the opportunities that will be inherent in an MBA program and how to evaluate that. Could you give us a bit of a background on the approach that Villainous University is going to use in their new MBA entrepreneurship program? Oh, I think that's a great point and a great question because evaluation, as you know, well, you know if, if it were up to me, uh, I wouldn't give any grades, right, to my students of entrepreneurship. But once we are in the university setting, and especially in the setting of a comprehensive university, the kind of university that Vilnius University is, of course, we are always faced with the issue of grading and assessment, student assessment. And that was actually one of the issues that came up in all of our round of assessment of the program on the way of, of, to accreditation of the program at Vilnius University and in Lithuania in general. Um, uh, because one of the questions was, uh, you know, how are you going to uh, um, evaluate teamwork, for example, right? Because most of the evaluation in other classes, well, let's take accounting that you mentioned, um, is very individual, right? So we look at a student and his individual progress and, uh, and we evaluate him or her. Whereas in entrepreneurship, for entrepreneurs, being able to work with others is uh, as important as being able to grow and work by himself, right, or herself. Um, another thing was also, you know, uh, because at Vilnius University, we do not have any tests, right? We do not test our students on um, a theory. We only test them on the practical assignments that they are uh, going to accomplish during the classes, you know, and those assignments should demonstrate whether they uh, know how to implement theoretical concepts that they um, read about or learned during the class or not. So that was another question, you know, how are you going to assess students um, uh, without assess without testing, right, without giving them tests. So. Um, the way that the system that we developed is kind of, you know, multi-layered. So first of all, of course, I think that in any classroom and especially in, in the classroom of, of entrepreneurship students, it's very important to um, evaluate progress that is the development of a student, right? So if our learning outcome is how student developed as an entrepreneur or as a person, then it's very important to see where the student started in the class and then where the student uh, ended up, you know, after the class. 
and that you know and creativity and uh, and being able to act upon an opportunity and actually to accomplish what you set out to accomplish even though you learned that you know it wasn't the best way to pursue but actually do, being able to commit to a task and you know look for different ways of solving it and then you know completing the task i think is a you know it was one thing that we are looking at when we're evaluating our students another thing is that the professor that you the professor's evaluation is only a part of the final grade for a module uh, there are two other parts self-assessment of a student that is how the student evaluates his or her progress right and then the peer evaluation how his or her team evaluates that person's um, progress on, and contribution to the team right because usually because we are we were trying to kind of come as close as possible to a real life situation and in real life if you have a team and you have a client and the client you know gives you an assignment and or you know an order and you know that client will not ask how much each of your team members individual contributed to the accomplishment of the assignment you know the client will look at the assignment and say you know i either like it or not i'm either paying for it or not right but then of course within within the team we will also you know assess our progress and assess the, uh, the work that we did so in this in our scenario in the context of illness university the professor is you know the client so to speak and then but of course your team members is, you know, another part of your evaluation and your individual assessment of your growth and, and uh, uh, effort is another part of your uh, final grade. Um, when, so that's, that's what we are actually coming up with. Mm -hmm. In some of the accreditation agency approaches that I've seen, they tend to focus or at least they emphasize predictability and standardization. In other words, they want the potential outcome of the student to be predictable that if they do these things and they put this effort and time into it then they should get this result and they tend to also want it to be standardized so that every running of the course is the same and every student is exposed to the same set of experiences so, uh, so each student if, if they're standardized and the courses are standardized across each each uh, instance of the course, then it starts to become that we can predict what outcomes should be and therefore you've got metrics and measuring and, and all of that good stuff. I'm listening to what you're saying and, and if we have students evaluating themselves, evaluating other students, the professors, how was standardization and predictability an issue and how, how do you address that? in uh, an entrepreneurship course when, when it, as we mentioned earlier, students come to the course from very different backgrounds, have very different objectives, can come with very different uh, opportunities or ideas in mind. How, how do we address that or was that an issue at all? Well, I think part, yes, I mean, Yes, part of the problem or the issue is that, you know, we don't want to standardize our students, right? We want them to be, you know, to be unique and to learn to play to their strengths during our program, right? And each of the students' strengths will be different, right? And we encourage difference and we encourage diversity. And we, when we uh, compose students' teams to work on different assignments, we actually, one of the requirements is diversity so that students are, you know, in diverse groups, you know, from the perspective of gender and ethnicity and age and, and background, um, uh, like professional background. Um, uh, so, so that's, yeah, so that is one of the issues. But on the other hand, you know, when you look at each, I don't know, um, module, for example, the module that you're going to teach at our program, which is the, you know, creative design, prototyping and testing, there are certain um, absolutely minimal, like threshold things that those students have to kind of learn, right? Uh, so I think these Threshold. So we want the students to learn something, uh, you know, something very um, fundamental to that module that they are uh, going, that they're going to study. But at the, you know, so that I think can be put into our, you know, syllabi and module descriptions and standardized to a degree. But of 
course, how the students are going to use it in their lives and implement in their lives, it then doesn't have to be standardized, right? Or it doesn't have to be uh, uh, the same for all students, right? So, but again, what we want to see, even if the students are going to be using the knowledge um, and the basic concepts, fundamental concepts differently, uh, we want to see that um, there's novelty in how they're going to do that, right? So, okay, so before your class, they didn't know that, you know, they can, uh, they can think about innovation and product design in a certain way, but now uh, they know it and they, they're willing to try it, right? They're willing to try something that they hadn't, haven't tried before coming to your class. And I think that's one of the things that um, we'll be looking at and we'll be evaluating. So, but of course it cannot be tested with a standard test, right? It's, it has to be uh, uh, done through reflection. So we use actually a lot of um, reflections of students before they, you know, come in uh, to the class at the beginning of the class and at the end of the class. And then, um, and then based on those reflections and on the level of reflections of students, um, we um, try to, you know, give them grades. Oh, that's very cool. When you mentioned er earlier about the life cycle approach, and how they might implement this over their life. Is there any plans in the program to follow the students' progress once they've graduated and, and perhaps use how well they implement that and their success over the following decades as a, as a feedback mechanism into the program itself? That is actually one of our biggest goals to be, you know, because we don't want to be a theoretical program where people, you know, come in, they explore what, you know, the buzzword, uh, the entrepreneurial mindset, you know, or the, the steps that you have to, to make, you know, to becoming, to creating, you know, a venture and value, and then they just leave and, you know, go on living their lives, which is fine. You know, some of the students will do it, we know that, and, and, and it's fine, you know, but our goal is to actually empower students and help them start something new a new project, a new venture, right, a new company. And we are willing to provide them with a certain kind of mentorship uh, even after they graduate from that program. So that is, uh, you know, and then, and then of course, keep it, and in general, just keep in touch with them and see if, if what we are, um, we will be doing in the program is actually helpful and is actually empowering and it's that, and, and it, if it actually instigates change. So that is one of our um, biggest goals and one of our biggest ambitions. Uh, we're still in progress of developing that mechanism. Um, but we're, we're, we think we're on the right direction and we want, you know, to, to kind of uh, invest more and more of our time and energy, you know, in, in this follow-up program that will um, kind of be implemented after the students um, graduate. Because many of our students actually, when they come to our, you know, other programs, especially to this program, they say, well, you know, I've been thinking of starting maybe my own business, but I... I don't know if I'm capable, and it's quite honestly, it's very scary to me, which is understandable. You know, if you if you worked in a corporation for 40 years, then just suddenly kind of changing uh, your lifestyle, because, you know, being an entrepreneur is, is a very different lifestyle than being a corporate um, employee. Uh, it is scary, you know, but many students, when, once they graduate our other programs, they actually say, oh, you know, I didn't think I was able to do that, but now after this program, I know I'm able to do it, I'm empowered, and I want to do it, to start my own business enterprise or, you know, a project. So we hope that we can accomplish it with this program too. And uh, if that happens, we're very willing to, um, you know, to, to kind of stay with our students and provide them with a certain kind of mentorship. So I have a couple of follow-up questions based on what you were saying. One of them is that in many entrepreneurship programs, there's usually a support structure around the program itself. It may be incubators, it may be, as you mentioned, alumni coming back as mentors, it may be uh, investment funding, of, there may be uh, connections to angel or venture capital funding arrangements. Uh, for example, I've, I've um, visited programs in other universities and they will often have an extensive structure around the degree itself. And is, while this provides support, to the program, 
uh, I was wondering whether those components are really necessary or are they something as an add-on? Well, I think I probably, I don't know if you don't agree, if you agree with me or not, that ecosystem is of key importance for, you know, entrepreneurs and for their, you know, ability to thrive, right? So, you know, when entrepreneurs feel that they have, you know, uh, as you say, you know, enough kind of um, uh, foundation, like investors to go to or mentors or, you know, co-working spaces or in general just resources to kind of draw from, you know, during the time of their, um, uh, you know, careers or developing a business. I mean, the more the more confident they feel and the more willing they are to kind of, uh, you know, take more risk and develop more, uh, more interesting and um, innovative ideas. So I think ecosystem is uh, very important. And that ecosystem is, you know, businesses, uh, universities, schools and government. So I think that uh, I don't know if it's very uh, important for a single program to develop an entire ecosystem around it. If, if you know, the, the general kind of ecosystem on the national level exists uh, and is in place, but in Lithuania, which is it is not the case. So we actually, I think this university sees um, a, itself as an active kind of, um, you know, as an engine of building that ecosystem in Lithuania so that our students do not just leave into this vacuum, into this kind of, you know, second space, you know, cold space where they're like not, uh, you know, not understood and not welcome. So, yes, so definitely we're trying to involve our alumni who have their own businesses to come back. And one actually, one of our alumni is actually, was very um, active in contributing to the design of the program. He was one of the consultants uh, for us, you know, when we were designing the program. Uh, we are... Uh, putting together a, net, a network of mentors from businesses and companies that who can come in and consult our students on certain assignments, uh, well, maybe not for an entirety of, of a whole module, but just for, you know, um, a few hours. Uh, we are talking to, uh, to venture capitalists and we're talking to the um, Lithuanian Business Angels Network, you know, about... Uh, providing our students with an opportunity to pitch their ideas to them, right? And uh, and explaining to our students, you know, and giving them feedback and explaining to our students what makes a good idea and then, of course, if that idea is appealing to them in investing in it. And we're also thinking about, uh, about actually uh, setting up kind of a more entrepreneurship accelerator uh, thing at Vilnius University where it, we call it entrepreneurship too, where uh, students who, for example, graduated one of our programs and developed an idea can actually come and start implementing it with the help of our network and our professors too. So uh, is it necessary for educational purposes? Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe you can just learn, you know, from uh, from your professors and from your classmates. Um, but I think it's it's it actually helps a lot. And I think e ecosystem is very important. Uh, you know, as a kind of uh, as an idea that you know that you will have somewhere to leave to after uh, graduating the program. That sounds all very cool. I still, as we conclude our podcast today, do you have any takeaways for our listeners? Mm. Uh, well, first, first of them probably is that actually I am a believer in uh, education and our entrepreneurship education. I kind of think that entrepreneurship is like any talent. For example, I don't know music or theater. You can be you know, born with a natural talent, and then, uh, and then, of course, you can kind of develop it by doing stuff and making mistakes. Uh, but you can also develop it in a studio environment or in a classroom environment with your instructors and mentors. And hopefully, that environment will make will help you avoid certain mistakes. So I think, so I think, education for entrepreneurs is important. And also, I think. Um, that we shouldn't, and I, and the, the other thing is that I think ecosystem is also very important for uh, uh, 
bringing up entrepreneurs, nurturing entrepreneurs, and uh, helping or initiating um, uh, formation of really good ideas, global, scalable ideas, globally appealing ideas. Oh, very cool. So we've been speaking today with the director of the new MBA Entrepreneurship Program, Aista. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for this conversation, James. Okay, good luck. Thank you.